Okay, ABO family, today we're introducing a new formula um, and a new concept as a part of our lens computation guide. And this concept we're going to tackle in this video is determining vertical imbalance. Now, it sounds new, but we've actually already learned how to do the majority of what we're going to be tackling in this video. Vertical imbalance is just another way of talking about prism, and we learned that we can apply Prentice rule to help us determine the amount of prism created, and we are going to be doing just that in this video. Now the big difference here is that we're talking about vertical imbalance. Now vertical means that we are gonna be working in the 90th meridian. So instead of horizontal at 180, we are going to be working with vertical at the 90th meridian. And we're going to be able to determine how much vertical imbalance is created when our patient who wears a multifocal uh, looks from the distance portion of their lens into the reading portion of the lens. And this really only becomes applicable for a patient who wears a multifocal um, and who has a marked difference between the right and left distance power of the lens. So again, this is a multifocal patient who has imbalance in the prescription. So the right maybe is a um, plus one and maybe the left is a plus four, something like that. So there's some imbalance in that distance portion of the lens. As they move down the lens vertically on the 90th meridian uh, into the reading portion of the lens, uh, they will experience some imbalance and that imbalance is prism. This equation is gonna help teach us how much prism is being created and then which eye that we need to add slab off which is a form of prism to in order to correct this imbalance. So let's go ahead and get started with our equation. We're gonna use practice exercise number one, and we can see on the page that the patient's right eye has a prescription of plus two, minus one, at 30. The left eye, spherical, with a power of minus one. So no astigmatism here, just a spherical lens. Now we need to know what the power is at 90. So as they move vertically down the lens, what is that power uh, that they're working in? So power in a quested meridian, the given axis is 30, our requested axis is 90, and we have a difference here of 60 degrees. We learned that 60 degrees away equals 75% of the cylinder. So 75% of our minus one is gonna equal 75, minus 75. We're gonna combine that minus 75 with our sphere of plus two and we learn that the power at 90 is plus 1.25. So 1.25. So that is our right eye. Now on the left eye, they were really nice and they gave us a spherical lens, which means that at every single meridian, one, two, three, 45, even at 90, this lens is a minus one. So in a spherical lens, it doesn't matter what meridian we're talking about, that is the power. So this is where things are a little bit different. Uh, when we're talking about vertical imbalance, we need to figure out how much different the right eye is from the left. So how much travel 
would we have to make to get from a plus 125 to a minus one? So if you think about your power wheel, on the lensometer, we would have our, let's say, plus 125 up here. And then we'd have Plano, and then our minus one is down here. So how far do we have to travel to get from our plus 125 here to our minus one down here? So we actually would travel 2.25 diopters. So we have a difference of 2.25. So this becomes the power in our Prentice Rule. So Prentice Rule basically just says power 2.25 times displacement divided by 10. Now, displacement previously in horizontal prism was the difference between the PD and the OC. In vertical prism, it's just the amount of movement that it takes to get from the distance into the reading portion of the lens, so into the segment, like a bifocal or a trifocal. How far do we have to travel? Now, in example number one, they're telling us that we had to travel eight millimeters to get into the reading portion of our lens. So we say power at 90 times the amount of travel to get into the reading or displacement divided by 10. This is gonna give us 1.8 diopters. So this particular um, amount of movement and the imbalance in our patient's prescription actually creates 1.8 diopters of prism between the patient's right and left eye. Now, this doesn't really work well for our patients. So their description to you might be that they're seeing double at the reading level of the lens. So when they look in the distance, everything is clear and crisp, but they can see one image, one road sign, one store. However, when they go to read something up close and use their uh, bifocal or their multifocal, um, they're actually seeing double. Uh, this amount of prism would create that double image for your patient. Now the fix for this double is uh, something called slab off. And slab off is just a form of prism. And what we need to do to finish this particular equation or finish this answer is to tell the lab which eye we need them to add this 1.8 diopters of slab off to. Now slab off is always placed in the lens with the least plus or most minus. Let me say that again, the least plus or most minus. Now if we're dealing with a prescription like this, with a plus and a minus, it is always gonna go on the minus side. So we would say that we're gonna be placing 1.8 diopters of slab off in our patient's left eye. So here's our answer, 1.8 on the left eye. So again, least plus most minus. If I had a plus one and a plus two, we would actually put it in the plus one because it's the least plus. If I had a minus one and a minus two, we would say that it goes in the most minus. So it would actually go in the minus two. We will do another one of these here in just a second, just to get some extra practice in, because this is a new deal. 
So again, this vertical imbalance for our patient uh, warrants uh, 1.8 diopters of slab off in our patient's left eye. Let's erase this and let's go ahead and tackle another one of these praxis examples. Okay, here we go. So we've got uh, number two. We have a right eye with Plano minus two at 180. And then we have a plus one minus 50 at 135. Not so nice this time. We've got to do our power and requested meridian on both eyes this time. And then they told us that the reading level was 10 millimeters. So let's get our apprentice rule guy ready down here. So power, power times displacement, that's our reading level divided by 10. So we just gotta work on filling in the power piece of our equation here. So right now we are at 180 on the right side. We need to know what the power is at 90. And the difference between the two is 90 degrees. So we're gonna be using 100% of our cylinder. So 100% of our cylinder is a minus two combined with Plano or zero equals minus two. So our right side of the patient is a minus two at 90. Let's work on the left side. So on the left side, we're currently sitting at 135. We need to know what our power is at 90. When we do the math here, we are 45 degrees away. So 45 degrees away equals that 50%. 50% of our cylinder of a minus half equals a minus a quarter. Combined with our plus one, and we end up with a plus 75. So our patient is a plus 0.75 at 90 on the left side. Now we've just got to figure out the next step here, which is how far or how imbalanced is our patient. So the difference between a minus two and a plus 0.75. Again, thinking about that on the power wheel, how far would we have to travel? We'd actually be traveling 2.75 diopters between the right and left side of our patient. So we get to plug that 2.75 into our apprentice rule. So 2.75 times 10 divided by 10 we get an answer of 2.75. So this is the amount of slab off that it's gonna take to cre create, or sorry, to fix uh, this particular imbalance. Now we've gotta determine uh, which eye the slab off should be placed in. And remember, we said least plus most minus. So least plus most minus. Now if you remember I said, if you have a minus and a plus, it is always gonna go in that minus side. So we would be placing this 2.75 diopters of slab off in our patient's right lens. So the answer to practice exercise number two is 2.75 in the right side or OD. Hope this helps. 
If you have any questions, of course, give me a call. And nice job today.